First of all, I'm sorry if I talk weird or I look weird. I woke up today with a mystery fat lip. I think I've tried hard <laughs> to cover it with makeup and done quite well, but it really hurts. And it has, actually is really very swollen. So I don't know what that's about. Probably gonna have to go to the doctors later. But that's kind of apt for this video, right? lovelies welcome to today's video which is my lupus three years on after diagnosis we're in a new location today this is my desk um we've moved furniture around again for the millionth time in this room uh, because we had to move around furniture in our room we then had to move furniture in here so everything's got a bit of a, a remix so i hope you don't mind i still think it's cute like there's so much cute stuff on my desk um but yeah it's different so i was diagnosed with sle which is systemic lupus and i was diagnosed with that on july 29th 2016 so my three year anniversary of being diagnosed with this disease has just gone past um, and I like making these videos because so much changes, um, so much changes with the disease itself but also so much changes with me and how I deal with it and how I cope with it and how I live with it and all that stuff so I felt like this was really important to do because I think my lupus videos are some of the videos that I get the most like reach out from people for um, so I really wanted to do this video for you guys. So I have made notes on my phone so forgive me if I cut this a bit and like look down and stuff but yeah there's a lot I've got a lot to say actually this time. From my experience and from what I've learned um, over the last three years when you get diagnosed with something that's life-changing um, and is like lifelong there's no cure um, things like that and it's actually like a really serious disease um, you kind of go through a period of mourning and retreating and all of that is to protect yourself and actually what I found is that that is very very normal and natural and it's actually your body and mind's way of oh my god I've got this news that's like really really serious and really scary for my health um, and sometimes could be life or death so I'm going to protect myself and that's perfectly normal and I went for a long period of time thinking that that wasn't normal and that I like was weird for being like that but then the more I've spoken to doctors the more I've spoken to um, people that work with lupus charities and the more I've spoken to people that have lupus and that have had it longer than me it's perfectly normal and you actually need to let yourself have that time it happens for a reason and what I never thought of as well and what loads of doctors have now said to me is that when your body gets an illness, any kind of illness, even a cold, it's a trauma to your body and to your systems and the way your body works. Um, obviously a cold is like a minor trauma and obviously there's, there's a whole scale but it's still a trauma to your body, like your body is freaking out, trying to fix itself trying to save your life and <laughs> that's what your body does so you go through that and for me anyway I was just like okay well I found out why well, let's keep life going but you you can't do that like you need time to heal and although it's not heal in the sense of curing my lupus there's still a lot of healing that can and should and will be done um but I, you just need to give yourself time or give yourself as much time as you need and let yourself off like don't the more you be mad at yourself and frustrated and think that things that you're doing or the ways that you're reacting are weird, the more that's going to make you ill. Um, you just need to let it be, like let it be what it is, take as much time as you need, take it seriously. Um, even if everyone around you doesn't, you need to take it seriously and um, just take your time. You'll then start to learn what your new way of life is. So what is my life now I have lupus like what what does that mean for me how does that change my day to day but also how does that change my outlooks how does that change my opinions and my thoughts and my feelings about myself about the world all of that your whole life really does change and that's huge <laughs> so like don't be like I said don't beat yourself up if you're confused or if you feel a bit lost sometimes or down or angry god I've been angry <laughs> but um don't beat yourself up for those because they're perfectly normal emotions and, and you're going to start to learn 
what your new way of life is it just takes time so just give yourself that time and um be excited about that you're getting a whole new life and i know that sounds weird because it's like yeah but i don't want this crappy new life that has illness i want my old life trust me i've done three years of that it gets you nowhere <laughs> it really gets you nowhere and um yeah you really need to just be like okay so it's not bad it's not worse it's different it's just very different well for me especially my life is completely different than it was like literally polar opposites so I had to learn what that meant for me and how that worked and how I fit into it um, and doing that and going through that process has really really helped me in in my healing and my acceptance and I'll talk about an acceptance in a second but um, I think I don't think I could have done this and got to this point any sooner I think it's taken as much time as it as it was going to and I fought really hard to hurry up the process and it, it just didn't happen it will happen when it naturally happens um, but just kind of have faith in that and maybe on days where you feel quite, kind of hopeless or a bit lost or confused or frustrated have hope that one day you will come to a point of acceptance and also learning what your new life is and being okay with it and being happy about it maybe not happy about it, it's a bit strong, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Acceptance is really, really hard, but it does come. But it's also not linear. So it's not just like, oh, I don't accept it. Oh, I accept it now. Oh, up on an upward trajectory. No, it doesn't work like that. Like you'll have, you'll get to a point where you feel like you've accepted everything and you're like, oh my God, this is great. Like, look at me, I'm growing as a person. I've accepted my illness. Life is good. And then you wake up the next day in a flare or something and you'll be like nope I don't accept this <laughs> well that's, that's the way it's been for me anyway I don't accept this I don't want it I'm mad again I'm upset again and that's okay but I feel like every time you go through a phase of acceptance you're getting nearer to full acceptance and maybe full acceptance won't happen for all of us or for anyone I don't know but um even those small moments where you accept it I feel like they're good for your soul and they're good for your heart and your mind um just even accept not accepting the illness and being happy that you've got it but accepting that things are different now and that that's okay it's okay that things are different that has been really hard for me but it's been key in me feeling better and things do get better when you get to that place but again i don't feel like i could have rushed it i feel like i tried <laughs> and it didn't work so just have patience. I'm the least patient person in the world, so I totally get it if you're screaming at the screen right now saying, I can't! I get it. Um, but it kind of came naturally with a little bit of push from me, but like I said, I think it will happen in its own time. And the time comes that you get to this place, don't resist. Don't fight against yourself. Don't fight your illness. Like, obviously fight your illness in terms of like you know doing whatever you can to, to feel better and get healthy but as in don't battle with yourself over the fact that you've got this illness ease into it um try your hardest not to like be at war in your own head with yourself of like that's what i felt like i felt like i've spent three years like butting heads with myself or butting heads with lupus um and it's got me nowhere and actually i think it's made me more ill and the more i've just eased into it and had a little bit more acceptance i genuinely feel better so um because it's all to do with your physiological responses and um i learned a lot about that through going through like physiotherapy um for pain management and fatigue to do with my lupus um your body is like stressed and your physiological responses are all going off crazy because they're stressed and then when you are frustrated and tense and you're fighting yourself you're adding to that so you can never heal and bring your physiological response back down to a place where it should be and where it is for most people for me i constantly have my like fight or flight response going um nearly constantly and i'm going to uh, autogenic training for that which i'll do a whole video about that soon but um yeah that's a lot to do with fighting myself over it and like fighting my own head about it and that's just not going to get you anywhere the more you ease into it the easier things get and the better you'll feel 
Let go of all the things that society tells you are normal or best or the way things should be. It'll be the best thing you do for your physical and mental health. Stuff like what time you should go to bed, what time you should wake up, should you nap, should you not nap, how long should you nap for, how many rest days do you take when you're in a flare, um, how many times should I go to the doctor, should I stop bothering the doctors, am I lazy, am I not productive enough, I should keep going, I should fight myself, I should fight through this illness. We've been told all of these things like our entire lives and actually it's the worst thing for us because especially when you get ill and your body's so thrown off genuinely i can't tell you how much better i feel for just letting myself be i'll eat when i need and want to eat i'll sleep when i need and want to sleep i will wake up when i need to wake up when my body wakes up um i don't force myself obviously there's some circumstances where you kind of have to like sometimes you'll have to get up earlier than you want to etc but don't beat yourself up about it again don't tell yourself oh you know i'm bad because i'm not doing what society tells us which is go 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 constantly um you're ill you can't do that and that's okay and like it doesn't make you worth less it doesn't make you any less of a human being any worse of a human being it doesn't make you anything you're just an ill person and this is the way you have to look after yourself and that's fine and you need to draw that into your head productivity does not make you worth more okay it just doesn't so do what's best for you advocate for yourself you have to you have to have to have to you're the only person that can do it for you really like obviously if you're in a circumstance where your illness means that you need someone to advocate for yourself that's not i'm not saying anything against that that's obviously a real very real thing but what i mean is stick up for yourself if you go into a doctor's appointment and for me i don't know if you're like me but i've had a million of these i feel like i've had the worst time with doctors and hospitals and i do wonder sometimes is that just because i've got a bigger sample of doctor's appointments because i'm ill like does everyone go through that like you know if you're a normal healthy person and you only go to the doctors once a year you're gonna have probably have a better opinion of them than me who's there every week at a different place but if you really feel like something a doctor is telling you is wrong stick up for yourself and correct them and f get yourself the help you need i've been in this situation so many times and trust me i know it's not easy it's actually really incredibly difficult and i am a very confident person I'm outgoing, I have no problem with like public speaking, speaking to people in those in those ways, like I never have, but with doctors, I've found it so hard to advocate for myself. Uh, they say stuff and I'm just like, I know it's wrong in my heart and in my head and everything, but I go, oh okay, and I leave, and then I'm worse off for it, and then I get so annoyed at myself, I get, I do that angry crying thing, you know, you all know, you're real. <laughs> that angry crying thing of like i'm so annoyed at myself that i didn't do it so now i've started doing it more and let me tell you the results have been great if i go in there and i've because I, again i don't know about you but i now as an ill person do like a lot of research on um my symptoms and stuff before i go to the doctor and most of the time i'm pretty sure of what's wrong with me before i go in and i've gone in before and i've said look you know I, oh, I have these symptoms, what's wrong with me? But I've started going and going, I have this and I need this to treat me because I've spent so long looking it up. And I'm not saying you have to do that, but it's the approach I've taken because of bad doctors and bad experiences at hospitals. And let me tell you, most of the time they're just like, oh, okay, what are your symptoms? And you go, this is, and they go, yeah, you're right, it sounds like that. You know, a lot of them, especially NHS doctors, they're overworked, they've been there all day, they've seen a million people. Sometimes you need to just like put the information in front of them because making them think through what it could be is just, it, it often gets you nowhere, especially when you have an illness that's permanent that complicates muggle, <laughs> normal people illnesses. Um, so yeah, just make sure you stick up for yourself if you know that something's wrong. Let me tell you how many times a doctor has said, no, 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 it's not that, it's this, sent me away with something, and then I've read the leaflet and it says, do not take this if you have lupus, like specifically in bold do not take this if you have lupus so i'm like okay great thanks you've given me something i can't take or they've said it's this and then i go back to them they go no you were right it's probably that because this hasn't worked and i'm like <laughs> you are the only one living in your body and with your body 24 7. you know you best 
you have to believe in that constantly and when I went to a mindfulness group he said that he said like who knows us who knows our bodies best the guy that runs it and I was like me <laughs> and he was like that's exactly right and everyone laughed because they were like oh expecting you know that a doctor does um, and all of them said that they were like well I thought you were going to say a doctor or a specialist and he was like no you're the only one that lives with you you know when something's wrong and when something's right and that is 100% true because you are the only person that lives with you. So if you have a true gut instinct about something, about a new symptom or anything like that, then stick with it because you're the only one living with you. And yes, you can describe things to doctors, but they're still not experiencing it the way you are. So you know you best. Knowledge is power. Do your research and try everything once is what I kind of say. So I do a lot, like I just said, I do a lot of research on stuff before I even go into a doctor's office. Uh, it's just been my way of protecting myself, I guess, against those awful experiences. Um, but yeah, do your research. The more you know about your illness, the better. The more you speak to people that have it, uh, watch videos like this on people that have it, look stuff up. Obviously not every source is a reliable source, but the more knowledge you have, knowledge is power what i meant by try everything once was what works for me won't necessarily work for you uh if you have lupus you know not probably by now that everyone that has lupus has it differently we have different a different amount of symptoms there'll be a lot of similarities of course but that's another big hard thing about um doctors with this illness is that you we all have it differently so i'm willing to try things and if they don't work my cat's trying to get in i'll say this doesn't work and can i try something else but just know that not everything that works for you or or doesn't is going to be the same for another person with lupus and i've tried so many things now that i'm starting to have a little repertoire of like things that work for me like when i get this symptom i do this and when i get this symptom i do that and if you're didn't interested in me doing a video of that i would be i'd do it for you but like i said you might be different but i've kind of put together a little like mental first aid kit for SLE where okay I'm having this symptom I do this and that fixes it and I'm learning what works for me and you need to do that as well but it does take time don't like expect it to happen overnight so those were kind of like my main points but I just want to say like it's been a long three years and um I'm still learning it's still a roller coaster I don't want to give the impression that like I'm fine now because I'm not and um my flares have kind of changed like and it's hard to keep up i just think the main thing is is just like love yourself be kind to yourself advocate for yourself um trust your instincts trust you, your mind and your body and accept things and just ease into your illness rather than fighting it because and I know that I know how frustrating that sounds like in my if I was in my first year of getting diagnosed and someone said that to me I'd be like shut up <laughs> like I get it it's frustrating um I don't mean be best friends with lupus I don't mean you have to walk around like I'm so happy I have it but I just mean if you have a flare that lasts months and it makes you bedridden and you can't do anything don't beat yourself up about it don't think that you're worth less than anyone else that's out there working every day don't think you're any less amazing because you're not you're just you just have a serious illness and this is the way it affects you and this is what you need to do to take care of yourself it's also the smart thing to do is to take care of yourself so don't let anyone make you feel like the way that you care for your illness is wrong or stupid or weird because it's not uh you know you best and yeah, after three years, I'm in a completely different place than I was when I first got diagnosed. Um, actually, when I first got diagnosed, I was very much like, yay, because I've been so ill for so long and no one knowing what it was. I was kind of like, yes, at least now I know what it was and I can tackle it. But I was very, very unwell that first year. And actually, it's weird for me sitting here because last summer I was at my lowest point with my illness. Um, I had some very dark thoughts and... and that's because the summer, um, if you're watching and you don't have lupus or you don't know, causes uh, like the sun and heat and UV rays cause flares and can make you ill. Like as little as three minutes in the sun for someone with lupus can exacerbate your um, symptoms and make you make you ill. And it does really have a strong effect on me, the sun and the heat and everything. 
so last summer I was incredibly ill but this summer I've learned from that and I've said okay so I need to do this to keep cool and I need to do this to protect myself and I need to do this to look after myself and I've done it and that's the only reason I can sit here and chat to you like this is because I've done those things but it's taken time to learn it and don't don't be mad at yourself that you're not learning quick enough or quickly or quicker than you want to it's gonna take however long it takes I think and I don't know if that will upset some people but I'm still not like I'm not there I have days where I'm seriously fed up and seriously down and seriously angry about my illness still um but the way I handle it is different and that does make a difference so I just think yeah you know you best and um if you're watching and you have it solidarity and love to you and support to you do feel free to, to reach out to me about anything um i love talking to people who have lupus as well just because you know it, you don't come across a lot of people that have lupus in day-to-day -day life or i don't anyway um so relating to people is especially important but also um go and watch my like one year and two year after diagnosis videos because they're very different, <laughs> in a totally different place each time, I think. Um, I want, I'm gonna go back and watch them now. I wonder if it comes across on camera how different things are. But yeah, that's it. I'm gonna leave you be. <laughs> this video is probably really long, I'm sorry. Um, I hope you're having a lovely day. Please do give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe, I do a lot of lupus videos. And yeah, I'll see you again soon. Bye.